Alright. I'm ready. Um. <clears throat> so, I did a lot of work yesterday. I got fish working. Um, I did the seagull and the whale. Um, and then today I did a. I feel like I did something before, but um, I also did the walls for the coral, and then I was working on the eel, and then I stopped there and took a nap. And I'm going to start working on the eel again. The eel I've been working on for hours and hours. It was like most of my time. <laughs> I still can't get the damn thing to work. Um... We'll look at that in a second. Let's look at everything else first. This sucks. I think I'm gonna have to do something to where I like better understand. Because there's clearly a misunderstanding of how that works. <laughs> Alright, so other than that, uh, the walls were just. Um, where are they? Right. The walls, I just went in and drew a mask, like this, around it, so that's what we're colliding with, instead of uh, what we had before, and I ended up separating them all, so now the walls are just each their own sprite, with their own mask, because that's easier to do. <clears throat> um, and then I guess we look at the fish that I did. That's where I ended yesterday, right? So, yeah, that's right. Okay. Shallow spawner. So in here, I've got the uh, the seagulls. I got the well, but I disabled it. I got this other type of fish I've disabled. We're just going to look at the, uh, the normal color fish and the normal background fish. So a lot of this was just me figuring out the first script, and then once I had that figured out, I uh, used it for everything else. Kind of, I don't know. Actually, they're all kind of. I'm I'm happy with how it all turned out. So I look at this, but um, in general, the way I got them to work is I made this uh, target X and target Y is kind of like. It's not its own object, but the points might as well be. And in fact, I'm using a draw event to draw where it was. So I'm drawing this little box where the uh, target is. And I just make it move around randomly and the fish will swim towards it in its own smooth motion while it's like moving, glitching around. And then if it ever reaches the target, the uh, target will just move to another part of the room that way the fish isn't like jittering around trying to catch it because yeah, that looks bad so basically the fish will just have a smooth motion um trying to move to it and if it runs out of movement then it just stops but if it hits it then it shifts and it moves somewhere else um the movement system i used was basically what i had before which is this 90 degree to this uh 250 or wait not 250 270 oh that's a mistake let me uh go in and see if that's anywhere else i ended up changing uh, the i had a problem where i was using this for the surface and i changed it from 270 to 250 and that's where that happened i thought i fixed it i got this one and i guess i just missed this one at the end here because it's way off the page I hope that's not anywhere else. Two seventy, okay, that's good. Um, get this one real quick. Oh, two fifty. Yeah, that would have caused problems. I mean, I didn't see any problems, so probably very rare that that would activate. But it's in a lot of this code. Oh, that's fixed. Yeah, so this thing, it chases around like a moving point, basically. 
you can think of it like the bait and it's just looking for the bait um so it's got some variables that keep it inside a certain range um i did make it to where it can be killed but it can only be killed by like uh running into enemies or by being in the middle of explosions which makes sense it would kill the fish They behave just like a jellyfish to where they'll float up to the top of the screen and then float off the screen. They don't ever get deleted because there's never that many fish, it doesn't matter. Um, so this hits target. Is this even the right one? Yeah. Um, target's in a random range based on direction. Uh, and it's between that and that. Oh, it's moving. This is the movement. So it moves. At a certain value and it changes direction on a uh a random chance a 10 percent chance it'll change direction because that made it look better if it moved if you don't do that it'll just stay in one spot and just wiggle around because that's kind of like how variance works so you gotta like have it go more to the right or more to the left um if you want it to actually move around this keeps uh, the target within certain ranges so that it doesn't move where the fish can't get to it. A lot, I think a lot of this is kind of what I had before, just basically changing the way that works. But I know that like fish movement might be something somebody else might want to know how to do. So here's all the code for it. If you want to use it, I don't care. Go ahead. Uh, if dead. Image Y scale is negative scale, so it just flips upside down like a dead fish. Image speed zero, speed zero, turns the alarm off, it floats to the top. If it gets to the top, it will move based on which side of the room it is, off the room. Uh, and then it has these states for swim and sprint, where it moves faster. Um, if it ever reaches the target, this doesn't matter but if it did reach the target it just stops it from being jittery to where as long as it's within speed times two it'll just stop moving which looks nicer and yeah changes its image x scale based on the angle it's moving which is just two big pie halves that way and this way <laughs> uh okay now let's look at it because that's always nicer. So what I did is I drew that box moving around and then I drew a line to that box if it's ever trying to find that box. Also shrunk the size of the boat because I thought it might look a little better. Which I kind of like it this size so I might keep that. Might be too small, I don't know. Alright, let's look at this. So again, you see the little boxes and then they just go to the line when they're trying to find it. And if I get rid of all this stuff you see that the movement just looks a little more natural. They do still run away from the player, which is fun. And um, there's background fish. I just noticed that some of the blur is not working on the bigger fish, which I didn't notice that before, but I'll have to look at that. I, I got this uh, shader for blur, which works most of the time unless the size of the spread is too big. And then you gotta like redo the values. I'm surprised I didn't notice that before though. Makes me think I moved it. Oh yeah, there's some dead fish. They got hit by these salmon and they just get wiped out. It's kind of funny. It's just like a little thing that you can interact with, which I kind of like. But yeah, that's how that works. Gives them a more natural looking movement, I think. I don't know where this rally is. Sometimes they, they can go behind the boat and they can go off the screen a little bit too. Oh, he's dead! No! Aw, oh, poor guy. I'll never find Nemo. Alright, uh, I want to quickly look at the corals while we're here. So here's the corals. Uh, new hitbox. It actually makes a little more sense to where I drew the hitbox just being right on the edge, ignoring the, uh, yeah, just on the edge of the rocks, basically. And these guys, the thing that, uh, they're working completely, except for the fact that on their last frame of bite, they just 
shift back to zero, the idle state. And I just, I've tried so many different ways and I haven't figured out how, what's going on there. So I really want to break this down after I've finished showing this stuff. See, that was a perfect example. <laughs> and you tend to shoot at them when they're fully out. So that happens a lot, actually. this way but the death animation I drew makes him just kind of go back in and then there's another one where he didn't go all the way in on his last frame I just don't get the animation stuff why it keeps breaking that's the frame it's supposed to be in before exploding so that's what I was working on uh, so what I'm going to do is turn off that draw thing. I don't need it anymore. So it's kind of cool to just see how it works. And this is how I was drawing that line. So I was drawing the rectangle at the point that they're looking for. And then I said if state equals swim or sprint, drawing a line from our coordinate to that coordinate. So that's kind of like showing them going to it. And then that helped me like understand what they were doing. So that was... Cool. Like this, because I don't even need the draw event now. And I kind of want to actually see what it looks like without the uh, all the mess. Real quick. All right, this is a bad stage. You're all gonna die before they even really do anything. I think it looks pretty good. They move around a bit more naturally. I just like the, that they keep getting killed. It's, oh, humanity. Poor fish. But yeah, oh, there's one that's bad. Blurred fish down here. I don't know, I kept looking at the good ones. I, I'm going to have to adjust the values and get that fixed. Uh, okay, let's close those out though. They they work besides that blur thing. The blur shader is this. All it is is the second one, this part. Um, and the thing that is messed up is this 0 0.5 is too strong. I think if I turn this down a little bit, I think it would fix it. There. The problem is, is this blur works really good on the second type of fish that we're going to look at. So I don't want to adjust the value. I might want to make, like I did with the well, I had to like adjust this value way down to make the well work. It's at 0 0.001 and that's the highest it can go without causing any sort of tearing. So I might just make another shader um, for the fish that actually work and keep this blur for these guys because it works really good on them. Alright, so the shiny fish. Um, Alright, there's three of these. Here's the ones in the foreground. So I think it's very similar to the other one, only they're not like chasing a point around, they're just moving randomly. Um, their image angle equals direction, so they actually face in the direction they're moving. Um, I also use that code, which this is very handy. Uh, instead of flipping the X scale, I flip, flip the Y scale. So basically, if they're moving at an angle that's this way, they would be upside down because image angle equals direction. But I flip the Y scale, now the right side up while they're moving to the left. So that's how that works. Uh, and most of this is the same. Move towards point. They're still finding a, uh, a target X and target Y. Um, yeah, just a lot less states, but basically the same code. That's how all this works. I mean, that's all the same as the last one. And when they die, they do this a little bit. So, really nothing too crazy here. I don't think I showed that before, but that's what that looks like. Um, the back ones, though, are a lot different. Because I wanted... The foreground ones are just kind of like a little thing to be there. They're not, there's not that many because it would be too distracting. Just a couple of them to kind of add into the scene. The background ones though, I wanted to actually look like 
swarm of fish. Uh, and, and that's what these guys are supposed to be like if you've ever seen like an aquarium or you know like uh, sharks feeding where there's just like a huge swarm of shiners. That's what this is supposed to look like. So these guys they still kind of follow the same um, pattern. They create 30 instances of these following fish. So these are like the leaders of the packs. And then these other fish that I'm creating, they've got like a pack of 30 that are following their movements. But there's an offset uh, between like 50 pixels. So basically they just randomly find a spot in their formation and they try and stick with it. But their speeds are all different. It ends up looking really nice, I think. I'll show it in a sec, but here's uh, yeah, the step of it for the shiny ones. Most of this still the same as far as the movement. I think this one moves just like a normal one, actually. Uh, they've got a blur on them. So they look like they're blending into the background. So the follow one would be the different one. And the big deal here is they follow their parent, which I use parent ID to get. And they have this X and Y offset, which is just a random range between a negative 50 and a positive 50. Their speed is random between 1 and 4. Uh, they've got a random scale, most of my stuff does. So, uh, still following a lot of the same code, staying in the room. And they're just looking for this point, but it's adding the offset to both values. And I do that for everything. So, yeah. Instead of going directly to them, where they would just all stack up into a big blur, they're just looking for a random spot somewhere around. And uh, we'll look at what that looks like. I have to go here. Uncomment this because that's the fish. I'm gonna get rid of the other ones because they're um they would be in the way. Alright, here's these guys. I think these will probably never show up in the shallow areas. So it'll look a little like it's too much, I think, in the shallows. But imagine, like, they spread out in the big sea maps. It'll probably be a bit better, and I'll adjust those values when I get to them. For now, it was just getting it working. So, this is what it looks like. So, you can see there's, like, a pack leader fish, and just all the other ones are trying to find them. But because they move at different speeds, they end up falling behind a bit, spreading out a bit, but they kind of look like they're moving in patterns. Looks nice. And then you see these foreground ones, they just, they end up really just moving back and forth. Um, adding a little bit of extra fish on top of it. I think it looks real nice. It looks like uh, there's just a lot of fish in this area. Pretty happy with it. The blur works really well on these guys. But that's why I'm going to be careful with adjusting that blur value. Not lucky you got a turtle stage. Let me just look at them. I like it. I think I'm really happy with the way that one come out. Um, I think you saw the seagulls at the top of the stage. They just fly back and forth. Um, pretty simple script here. They've got a direction uh, and a Y direction. They start at a random range off the screen on one side or the other. And uh, the Y is in the middle of where the top of the screen, that little box is, and they try and stay in the box, which is the air. Image speed, uh, the image speed changes. They're more likely to flap the rings, but sometimes they don't. That's how that works. Uh, X plus equals their direction X times three, and then divided by three. So they soar left to right faster than they saw up and down. Uh, if they ever get too high or too low, that stops them from getting too high or too low. There's a timer which changes their up or down. Honestly, I never put a zero in here. I probably should have. I don't know if that'll break anything though. It looks fine as it is.
And then I think we got something in here. Yeah, if it goes out of the room again, it just changes direction and then puts him somewhere random, starts it over again. That's how sequels work. Pretty simple. Uh, I'll look at the well next. Well's kind of like the same thing. Um, I just had to do a bunch of stuff to make him look like he's in the background. So I had to like do this blur, but I also changed his color to be a, a lot darker. Like a lot more green and blue. And I lowered his alpha to 50%. His image speed, I even lowered it even more. It's at 1 right now. So now it's like at half of 1. Uh, to get it to look like it animates real slow. That's what I wanted it to look like. Uh, he can either start on the left or the right, and then he moves into the screen. I don't know what this extra little bit is. This was to get him to spawn in the middle of the screen so I could test it. I don't need that anymore. Let me get rid of it. Step is he moves in the direction divided by two, so he moves very slowly. Yeah, well's pretty simple. Look at the well and look at the uh, the birds closer. So the well is here. And I'll go ahead and get rid of the fish. So the well starts a little off the screen, but it'll start coming in. He's supposed to be just a very rare thing that can happen. I don't think he'll ever show up in the shallows. Maybe? He does fit in the shallows, but I think he'll more likely he'll show up in the sea or the deep sea. The bigger maps. And he's currently set up to show up a certain depth and a certain distance off the ground. Which in this map is basically forces him to be where he is. But in the bigger maps, it'll put them somewhere in the center. But yeah, just a big old well. And it, I like it. It looks kind of like he's off in the background a lot. So it's not something you can interact with. It's just something in the background. We'll have like nice well songs or something in the stages that he shows up in. It's just supposed to be like a nice little additional thing that could happen. An interesting thing. Oh, and there's the seagulls flying across the top. Pretty simple. Um, okay. What was the other thing I did? I feel like I worked on something else. I just don't know what it was. Let's go ahead and close everything. And in fact, I'm going to turn the well back off because I'm probably not going to use them in this stage. Keep the seagulls though. Um. Oh yeah, I need to figure out the blur on these fish real quick. Let's let's do that before I forget. I'm going to all right. Let's add the ones that are background fish. I think it's the second one of both. both the background fish that way I can see them both and make sure I don't break both of them so I think I lower this number yeah the well I had to lower the number to make it not tear so let's just uh, go at like four or five and... I don't know maybe I should have lowered it a little, long, a little more I just don't want to change the back ones too much I want to get the uh, the front fish to where they're not causing any problems. Uh, there's a problem there. Back still look good. Or these guys still look good. The little ones. But this, I need to fix that. Alright, let's go a little more drastic. Like three. Still tearing. 
And now these ones look funny. Yeah. Um, okay. I think I am going to go back to five. And then going to just duplicate this. Because I don't think I can get it where they both work. Kind of like with the well. So we're going to call this, uh, word color fish. And we got to go to these guys. Draw. Use that one. So now I can... I'm at that again. I know this one's good. I just need to get this one working. And I don't have to worry about breaking the other one. Alright. So, what? That was three. That was still not good. Let's try one. I might need to just look for another blur. Script or whatever. Data. Still not good. I wonder if I have to go like higher. Oh, it looks like it's getting worse. Let's try going higher instead. I could also just try and understand how this works. Maybe that'll tell me what's going wrong. Or I can just nail it. I think that's it. Oh, look out. Yeah, look, they look good. I think, I mean, that doesn't look very blurry. Honestly, it just looks like it lowers the opacity a bit. <laughs> the alpha level. Which is something I could do myself. I'll try another one. Make sure we get a variety of fish. Oh, that one's mess. Messy. Crap. Yeah, the clownfish doesn't look good. Try eight. Honestly, if this doesn't work, I might try just lowering the alpha and changing the color myself. No good up there. Let's see. If I can get the same effect. I think I was changing the color. Yeah, blue. Um go back to well. Let's use these two. And just see if that'll work directly. Alright, so I turned the shader off. And then I gave them 50% off. Uh, less off of it. Basically see-through. And we have an image blend that's not just straight blue. I like if I do alpha a little more. I mean, that still looks pretty good. I just want them to be a little more transparent. That's good. It's not as good as the blur was, though, was it? It is weird that you can see through them <laughs> and see the ground behind them, but that's... I mean, the well, that's not a problem because he's in the middle where it's colored. It's just a solid color.
But I think that was something that would happen with the blur too. The blur also gives them kind of like a lowered alpha. I think this is good. Fine. They don't look like something you can interact with. They look like they're behind you. I'm not going to give up on the blur just yet, because I still think it looks better. I feel like it might be something close to 7. 7 was the closest we got. As far as making them all look good. Yeah, they look so much better like this. That one's bad. It doesn't help that they're all different sizes. The magic number. Why didn't I think of this before? It's so obvious. I'm gonna laugh if it actually works. All these look fine. That fixed that guy. The clownfish is the one that's messed up before, right? Oh my god, I think 69 might be the actual answer. <laughs> that's awesome. Ah. Oh, this one, I didn't get very many background fish. Oh, there's a couple more. They, were, they can go behind the... Uh, the floor. I think it looks good. I haven't seen one that has tearing yet. I think it's good. Alright, cool. Yeah, that looks a lot better than when I was trying to do it myself. So let's stick with that. Cool. I'm happy with that. So, point sixty-nine was the correct answer. Uh, okay, back to the eel. Stupid eel. I hate this eel. So, honestly, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new object. Uh, it'll be a test object. Because <laughs> I want to figure out what's going on here. I'm going to set the image speed super low. In the draw event, I'm going to say draw cell. And then draw text. Ah. Alright, what I want to know is what image index does. I also want to know how animation end works, because I thought I knew how it worked, but it seems like it's different. Um, I'm also going to draw... I'm going to draw this uh, variable called flip. And then to do the flip, I'm going to say...
Right. So flip is off, it'll turn it on. If it's on, it'll turn it off. It's like a switch. And if I'm drawing it, I can see whenever animation end activates, I can see it happen. Um, image speed's real slow, so everything should look good. I really wish... I need to set up my test room again. Because it would be just nice to be in a normal room without any enemies or anything in it. A controlled environment. So, let me look at that real quick. Are these all sprites? How did I open everything? <laughs> Well, that's something I did. I went through and changed uh, more of the collision mass because I figured out why um, why there was a box when I was doing when I was doing precision precise. If you have it set to manual, it's like precisely within the box. You have to set it to automatic and precise to get the whole thing. So I had to go make sure all that was true on all these guys. So like this one, yeah. This one's collision mask is precise per frame, but it's automatic. There's no box, it's just the collision mask is what it is. So yeah, that was the other thing I did. I went through and fixed all the collision stuff again. All right, so close turtle, we got ill. That one I'll need. Close the shaders. Close that. Close these guys. Probably need this wall. I don't care about the rest of this stuff. Alright. Um, I was looking at rooms. Test room. Alright, so this is where all my test stuff was at. I got my shader test, my color picker. I think I can delete all this stuff now. Alright, we're going to drop this new object in the here. Um. And then I need to change this. I need to change initialize. Where was that at? Here. Initialize. So instead of going to... Oh look, I still kept it in there. Very smart. Instead of going to world map, it'll go straight to the test room. This will make testing a lot easier as I figure this out. Um, and I think this is all set up. Let's go. So I know I looked at this before, but image index will equal a decimal point, which is something that I haven't been taking into consideration at all. I, I was saying before, I, I feel like it used to only equal a, like a full number. I might be wrong there, but I remember looking and uh, looking for things that are equal, you know, if image index equals six or if it equals three, but it'll like only equal that for one frame and then it will go on to 3.01. So I need to like use the floor of the value and round down. All right, something broke. Oh, flip, right, I never set that up. Close that, so let's name this object animation test. Uh, Creation Okay, this is the thing So it's counting up. It's basically at frame zero. Maybe I set it too low because this can take forever But yeah, uh, so the bottom number is image index, and the top number is either, it's just going to shift from 1 to 0. 
depending on whether the uh, animation has ended or not and caused it to flip. So yeah, we made it to one, it shifts to the next frame. So this makes sense. I understand how this works. Um, okay, it's taking too long. Let me <laughs> do this real quick. I think point one should be a little faster. I just want to know when does animation end actually trigger? Because I feel like it does not trigger when I think it does. You'd think it would be when the number reaches the top. Alright, so in my opinion it would end right as it hits 7, which 7 is the last one. Oh, that's right. The idle doesn't have that many frames, so... Right, okay. Idle doesn't have as many frames because I replaced the idle. Let me fix that real quick. Yeah, I didn't add the uh, the reverse on the, this because I had to redo the eel completely to add this death animation, which looks like this, by the way. It's just, uh, yeah, it gets brighter and brighter until it goes into the hole and then it explodes. That's what I came up with. It was easy to do. All right, let me fix this real quick. Copy, paste. Copy, paste. Alright, so now it should, like, pulsate. On and off. That's what it's supposed to look like. So, the final frame, or the final index, is 7. So it should go to 7.99, and then animation in triggers. And it goes, it starts out. That's what I was thinking. Let's see if that's how it works. Alright, because animation in should be when it starts over. <laughs> the very end of it. Here it is, counting up, one frame, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay, hasn't switched, and switch, yeah, okay, works exactly like I think it would work. Okay, then what is going wrong with my script? If, um, let's use step event. So I want to say, at animation end, well, how do I make it, how do I copy it and do what I'm doing here? So the idea here is it switches the dead if it's not already equal to dead. Man, I did so much stuff here to try and figure out what was going on. I never did. All right, so there's a lot of extra stuff that might not make any sense. <laughs> because of that, because I was really just throwing everything I could at it. Uh, so it says steady equal to dead, so this will never trigger again. Um, alarm zero, it turns it off, which is something in the code for uh, retracting. I also put it on end step instead of step, because I thought maybe that was what was causing it. Um, so the rest of the step event stuff's in here. So, okay, sets image speed to equal to 1, so it's not 0. If sprite index equals byte, um, then it's going to look for what image we're in. It looks for the floor of the image. So, I'm going to make sure that works. That's one thing I can test. I, it should work, but let's make sure, because that could be one thing that is going wrong. So, floor of flip should mean this always stays a whole number. So let's make sure that works. It is not. Okay, it's still showing decimals. That's solid. Floor should round down. Oh, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Yes, floor is a whole number. Image index is the one we want. Alright. 
That was a minor mistake. Okay. Yes, I think this does what it does. So it's zero, it's one. So that's how I thought it used to work. Basically, it would go through like this. So this removes the decimal point from it. Six, and then seven causes... Did not cause an animation there? Oh, there it is. That's right. It goes to eight. I forgot. Um, the other animations only go to seven. Okay. So that works. Um, right. So this... <laughs> If the floor of the image index is greater than or equal to 5, then the image index changes to 0, right? And then none of this will be true, except for this will be true, which will change back to 5. This is what's breaking it. Oh, we just solved it by looking at it. Oh, that sucks, I think. <laughs> That's what's going wrong. I need to do this and then I need to get out of the script. All right, well that's easy enough to do. I think that's what was what it was. Holy shit. It makes sense now. So yeah, it was uh, setting image index equal to zero and then this would trigger, because of course it would, and then it set it back to five. And that's why he was going back in the hole. That might not fix everything. But, um, it's definitely probably the problem. Definitely probably. <laughs> it's such a coding thing to say. Alright. <clears throat> so I just need to do that and then say this part. And then say exit. So it stops running the rest of this. Right, so if this ends up being true, then it'll set it to zero, change the sprite index, and exit and not perform the rest of this. It also means it won't perform the rest of this, but I don't think that matters. Alright, that might be the fix. I wonder if I should turn this back on. The retract is honestly not that necessary. Because the next, it like, the only problem with the retract is it doesn't line up one for one. It's kind of like one frame off. But that shouldn't be bad because it's going from like one frame here to one frame there, which doesn't look bad. It just looks like it starts to go back in the hall because it was already going into the hall. All right, well, let's, uh, I can test it in the test room, right? Let's throw him in here. He's facing in a weird direction. He did not go back to where he's supposed to be, though. But that's still a problem. But we start keep work still. So. Oh, I wish he would face in any direction but this. <laughs> Okay, he still went back, that's good. Oh, there we go. Some variants. Cool. I just need to get him to go all the way in the hole, but I think that's something else. And I might know what it is. Ah! I really want to kill him on the final frame. There we go. Okay. I think that proved it. That it's actually working correctly now. Except for that part that's not. Alright, so the part that's not is probably because of this. 
Um, I'm going to take, I'm going to comment this back out. And then I'll put it back in the animation end. So, if sprite index equals the yield death and state equals dead, then image speed gets set to zero, image index gets set to six, along one gets turned to 40. So this just sets it on the last frame of the death animation. Six is correct, right? Let's go to death. Six is this one. That should be it. All right, let's test that out. So can I just keep rolling? There we go. Let's get a better direction. There we go. Final frame. Ah! These guys are kind of dangerous. Alright. I think uh, it's working now. It's been working every single time so far. Ah! <laughs> And imagine some cool sound effects with that. It'll sound like a bomb about to go off. And then a bunch of sparks and stuff, bubbles and shit. Alright, well, turns out the animation stuff does work the way I think it does, and it was just another error. Um, I think I can even take this and put it back where it's supposed to go. I don't know if I want to reactivate this and fix it. It might look better. I don't really see a reason not to. Let's do that. Right, so this is seeing if it's retract. And then if it's any of these frames of the animation. Yeah, if it's zero, then it just equals zero, and it doesn't matter. This part will never happen, it doesn't matter. Now we just need this. Right on the end of these. Alright, so that'll get it to the correct frame it's supposed to be in, uh, in relation to this. Alright, I think I'm going to take this and put it back into the step event then. Okay, pretty good. Put it in step. Delete. Test one final time, and then we'll move on from this damn hill. So sick of doing the hill. Okay, clearly a mistake has occurred. So it was in the retract, it was definitely there. What happened? Maybe it's greater than or equal to 6. Technically, it should never be greater than or equal to 6. Because it's not a decimal point anymore. This one is true, though. I don't know why it broke. So what happened there is it did not get set to this. Alright. So right, if it was at zero, then this stuff didn't trigger. Okay. If it's at six, if it's greater than or equal to six, okay, all I have to do is this. Bam. Gotta fix it. So if it's zero, it gets set back to zero. And then it changes the death. Uh, okay, I think that's what caused it. Test again. Oh. 
Starting to retract. It's five shots, all right? One, two, three, four. Okay, that worked. Seems to be working. I think it's fixed. <clears throat> Does this represents every value. This represents every value. Should be good. Close. I'm done with you. <clears throat> Honestly, I'm not done with you. <laughs> There's a lot of like leftover code in here. I'm gonna make sure it's all gone now. Clean up. So. This is fine, making the collision. Live flash, nothing weird there. Step event. Okay, that's all good. What's next? I finally passed it. Doing traffic. <clears throat> Alright, traffic's gonna be a big one. I really did not get as much done as I thought I would <laughs> on my two days off. I've gotten a lot done. It's not from lack of working at least, but um, yeah it's gonna be probably another week to get through the rest of these. If I'm working on it like three or four hours. So, where to start with traffic? And close that. Close the enemies, close the wall, the background. Scaffolding, stage spawner, and testing. Um, I think I'll go ahead and close that. This. So what I want to do is actually open scaffolding. Initialize, go back to the map. I was thinking, I might make a video. I don't know, there's so many like tutorial videos for <laughs> um, like Game Maker Studio or any type of game dev stuff. But I think it would be good to have a tutorial video that's just for like tips and tricks kind of thing because I could probably think of quite a few things it's just like tips and tricks one being like having a test room um, having like a coloring object drawing uh, values to better understand them drawing lines and rectangles to better understand like understanding the difference between drawing and objects I think there's a lot of things that you, you won't learn from a tutorial, you have to learn on your own. Did, I could just tell you, kind of like I did before. Alright, I'm going to close that now. Um, so I guess I throw this in backgrounds. Where did I put all that other stuff that was part of the backgrounds? World map? Yeah, that's all in here. Oh yeah, that's something I wanted to do with the world map. All these extra birds that I had lying around, I should get rid of them. These guys. Leave them. Alright. Let's make a new group. We're going to call this traffic. 
because it's going to be quite a couple of them. I think it needs to be a new object for each, maybe, I don't know. I need to open up that list of traffic stops as well. I saved here. So, okay. There's definitely a unique object for the guy who drives to the parking lot and goes back. I think it's a unique object for all of these six that have unique paths. Because otherwise it'll get real messy. So I'm going to have six objects for that. And then for the parked cars, they'll probably... I might be able to do one object. I just need to set their image angle depending on where they're set. That's easy enough to do. So that'll be one object. Okay, so it's, like it's going to end up being seven objects. So we'll call this, um, how are we going to name these guys? I can just name them based on what they do. So this is the parking lot guy. Uh, we'll set, do we even create a sprite now? Uh, create event, so... Well, how do we start here? Let's open map, overworld vehicles. So we got car, truck, and van are the things it can be. So let's um, choose one, two, or three. Equals one. I want to do it that way. Because then I'd have to do... Yeah, no, this doesn't work. Um, we just say... Make. <laughs> Equals that. Um, if make equals one. All right, this is a car. Right? Let's comment that as well. Uh, that's the three vehicles. So we are technically a car now. So sprite index equals We gotta create. We don't have to create tech tail lights. I can make um. I can do that draw event. I don't know if I'm even gonna do tail lights and stuff yet because I need dynamic lighting before I can really do that. I can. Maybe I just. Nah, fuck it. I'm not gonna do that until I do dynamic lighting. So we're just going to get the vehicles themselves moving around correctly and come back to this code later. Alright, so we equal a car. Um, is that it? Yeah, I guess so. So this is really unnecessary. This is unnecessary because I can look right there and see what each one equals. I wonder if I should do like um, a whole range of colors. Which would be
I feel like this is going to more often than not get a dark color. But then we have completely random color colors. You can really get anything if I do this. <clears throat> so yeah, this is just make the red be a value between 0 and 255, blue and green. Green and blue. Uh, so it's just picking a random color, basically. Is that it? I'm trying to think. It goes to like a lot of points. I'm wondering if I should set these points up as like variables. I guess not. I'll just have to figure it out in the step event. Oh, but the creation part matters. So x equals. I need to be at the first point. Negative 30 and this. Let's copy that. There we go. That's our first coordinate. That way I don't have to place it later, I can just place it anywhere on the map and then it'll go where it's supposed to go. Makes things easier. Alright, um... So I guess it's just move towards point, right? Let's, this will probably be a smart thing to do. Well, that's all the different points it's got to go to. And now it's right here, breezy looking. Probably at one speed. So I, I want it to be like, it'll do this one first, and then it'll do the next one, then it'll do the next one, then it'll do the next action. Honestly, I need to have like an action thing. It works kind of like states, so it just goes through different states. Alright, I think that's how that'll work. So I want to do state equals, wait. equals oh god I always forget what this is supposed to look like this is one of the negatives of writing your code down is you never remember it because you rely too much on copy paste <laughs> there we go so our States now are just uh, one or action one. Yeah, let's call it this. So action one is to move towards this point. And then if distance the point. Forty one sixteen oh one is less than actually I'm gonna change this to be speed. I'm gonna set up speed. change that on the fly and I can change the number. That's a smart thing to do. If it's less than 
speed. I think speed times two is usually a good way to go. It gets close to it, and it doesn't allow you to accidentally miss it. At least, like, you need, like, a little more than your speed value, I think. Otherwise, I think you get issues. That might not be true, but... I believe it's true, so it's true. <laughs> If that state equals action two, there we go, and that's really how this is going to work. Going to move to the first one at speed. Once it gets on that point, it's going to set the next action, and this should work. I just do this over and over through all these different points. Um, okay, so I'm going to do that. Copy, paste, paste. Alright, 138 from. Guess the zero looked like an eight to me. 57. here is to go It's going to be very long by the end of it. We've got 25 actions to go through. I think this is the, one of the longest ones, though, too. Uh, yeah, it's definitely the longest one. So we're getting that out of the way first. So let's paste this, and we get rid of the action part. Get rid of these numbers. That. So that is four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-five. part of that is I gotta scroll all the way down to get my coordinates now unless I do something funky great note ah nice I've never done this before but it made sense There's a note. Hey, this is cool. Oh, 
come on. That's right, you won't be able to put it beside it, will you? Because of the way this page works? No, I just can't get too close. Damn it! Alright, that's good enough. That's a lot better. Alright. So, go ahead and do this part. Four, five, six, seven. I've never done an object like this before. Kind of interesting. I wonder, it's probably, I'm thinking like, what are the better ways to go about doing this? And I could do something like making this number a variable, but I'd have to like draw it as a, a string and then add it or something. I don't know if that would actually be worth it. Instead of just writing them out. Also, I think I need more actions than this, because technically stopping, parking, and backing up are like different things. I'm going to see if I can get it all in the same one. Probably can, as long as I'm creative. Is where I'm going to end up destroying the instance, probably, or something. Repeating it. Alright, so let's start putting in coordinates. <sighs> so we're on 4, which is 363. Three. And 1596. Uh oh, I see an error. I use 1596 up here. So this one was supposed to be 1605. Uh, it's super easy to make mistakes here. I need to be more careful. Alright. Uh, 468. Fifteen seventy seven. I wonder if anybody will ever watch this part of the video. If you're here, sometime in the future, I applaud you. <laughs> for sticking around with me. Because <laughs> I know this isn't exciting at all. But this is game dev. The thing that so many people wanted to... 15, 18. Sixty-six. 
Let's hope my points are correct originally. It should be. We'll see it if it drives off the road. X35. Right, I think I've been skipping stops. Um, I am. I'm going to get all the numbers in first, and then we'll figure that part out. I think that's a better way to do it. Because even if I have to, like, add in an extra action, that won't be too difficult. I want numbers in correctly first. Uh, 12, 12. 5, 9, 4. Maybe I should stop streaming, actually. <laughs> this would be the perfect thing. Or this is the kind of example of stuff I do off stream usually. Because it's just completely boring and very slow and tedious. Uh, it's a perfect thing to like watch, listen to a podcast or something while doing it. Um, I think I'll get the first one working and definitely do the other ones uh, off stream. Because it's just going to be a lot of tedious number pushing. But this, we'll get this first guy working. So then you have an idea of what I went through to make all the other ones. I need proof. Am I on Route 114? No, 534. Fourteen oh four. I tried to do enough points to where the movement looks uh, more natural. Basically any like little turn in the road. Because these go in straight lines. I knew that's what's, that was going to be happening. So I needed to get as many points as possible. select it. At least that'll help me identify it now that I'm getting in the middle of it. 569. Yeah, that's a lot easier.
Okay, we've got all the points we're going to. So if I was to play this right now, I should just see a car, a truck, or a van drive along the road, move to the parking spot. You won't back up directly, but um, it should move along the path. Maybe we should just test it now then. It'll look funny, um, but the one thing I am missing here is image angle equals direction because I want it to face in the direction it's driving pretty sure the car's sprite is facing to the right yeah Yeah, let's test it. I need to put it in the map to... It doesn't matter where I put it, it'll go where it's supposed to go. So this guy is down here. There he is. Same on the road. He's black. He doesn't stay in his lane, but that's fine. <laughs> Drives up, he'll drive to his parking spot. And then he's supposed to back out and then go forward. Oh, he kind of cuts quarters sometimes. And he drives off the screen. Oh, that was wonderful. I want to do it again. Press that button. Let's do it. All right, pink car this time. So I want him to stop at each of these, like, intersections. I want them to turn there. I feel like a point is missing from that. That one's a bit weird because it cuts a corner. Maybe I should put a button on them to like reset them. How much am I going to try and get it to look perfect? That's the question. Honestly, all of it looks good except for this part where he cuts this corner. The rest of it will change as I mess with the script. Yeah, I think this point is just not in a great spot. It should have been right in the center of this. Oh, what happened there? The very center of this is at 578-1509. Oh, I know what's going on, I think. I think that's a point, right? 578-1509. Yeah, okay, so this is this point. It is it is the spot. It's even one to the right of it. But uh, I think this speed times two is... Uh, it's not getting close enough to where I need to be. Let's try... I want to say let's try to just speed. At least for action number 18. So it goes to that point. If this works and looks fine, I'll probably remove the times 2 from everything. Or I, I just need to lower that to times 1.2 or something. I just get worried at getting stuck there because it can't hit the correct spot.
Still cut the corner pretty hard. Even with that. Well, let's take it um just a little bit further. Let's do 580, 15, 12. 580, 15, 12. I mean, he didn't have any trouble hitting the bot, so I do think I take this times two off everything. Can I replace with nothing? Can I erase do times two? And just replace it with nothing? Yeah, that works. Okay, cool. Put that off. See if that causes any issues. It's better. Not a degree juice that at least. I'm happy with that. I think another point is just this next point is kind of maybe not in the best place. What else? It was 18, so 19. Well, where is it first? It's uh, 525, 1553. 5, 15, 53. So it's kind of there. Let's do like 5 through 3. Right. 5 through 3, 15, 54. Also, I just noticed this is wrong. So that was probably causing an error too. Test it again. It's just the second part doesn't look good because I, I forgot to do this first part. Honestly, I'm going to turn this back to what it was. So let's get the uh, these other things working now. So okay, there's an intersection at action three at that point. So the idea is I want to get to this point and I want to pause before moving on. So here I want to say speed equals zero. Once it arrives at its spot. And then I guess I, I can activate an alarm. How do I do this? Because this is something that's going to be running constantly. I can't really run an alarm. It'll constantly set the alarm. 
It is a variable that I turn on and off. It would make sense because I've got lots of stops and I might as well use the same thing for all of them. So let's say... the decimation speed equals zero if uh, stop is turned off we say we set stop to true so this doesn't happen again and then we set alarm zero to 60 I could also instead of using stop just say if alarm zero is on I'm gonna try that I'm not sure if it will work but um, I want to see if it works the way I think it does if alarm zero Take this. Put it here. All right. So I want to say if it's um, this is something else I want to know about is how alarms work exactly. I'd love to see what an alarm does. I know once it gets to negative one, it is when it triggers. Or, no, negative one turns it off. But what do I need to do to see if it's been turned on or not? It's going to be if it's greater than something. I can't say greater than zero, I don't think, because it could equal zero as it's counting down. So I think it's got to be greater than, well, greater than zero, no, I have no idea, <laughs> I, I have such a no idea, I'm going to go back to what I had before, I went too far. Yeah, I'm gonna just use the Vero this. Alright, and then I just need an alarm to set us going again. But how do I do that? can't just say state equals action, action 4. So I think instead of the true false here, I just have three, three things it could be. Like red, green, and yellow. Alright, so if stop equals zero dot equals one and then stop equals two then we go on to the next one and we also set stop equal to zero again All right and then in the alarm itself stop equals two Two or one? Shit, I've already forgotten. If it equals two. Alright. So, if it's zero, set it to one. In one, we're waiting. And then, after the alarm goes off, it goes to two. Changes this to action four and sets stop back to zero so we can use this again. So that should work. Let's just uh, test it. We should stop at the first intersection now. For a second. 
to get there in time. There it comes. And it keeps going. Cool. Alright, I can just use that for all the stops. So, seven, do it again. So I want to take this, put it down here, and say it's stop. Like, I feel like there is a way that I could just check to see if the alarm is on or, on or not and use that instead, but use this variable because I don't know exactly how that works. Work, unless I screwed something up. This part can just be copied because it's never going to change. Like this is not the right one. No, it's this one. Skip the park and backing up, go to 17. Technically zero is false, but that'll keep it cleaner. Okay, it should make a stop at all these points now. Let's test that. Basically what we did, just a longer version of it, and it's unique, the only vehicle that stops in a parking lot for a while and then drives off, so we want 12, this guy. Um, yeah, I think it's the same thing, really, it's just a lot longer. It's the backing up part that's different.
Uh, and this needs to be set to something much longer. Let's do... I'm like 300 to 1200. I just want to park there for a while before it leaves. That should work. Um, it's the next step where he's backing up. That is different. For this one, I need to change his image angle to equal negative direction. I wonder if this is even necessary. Let's just try and throw it in here and see if it'll work. Because technically we've changed the image angle up here and we'll rechange it right here. So it should be fine. Everything here will be fine. It'll just look like he's backing up. I hope it's that simple. Let's see. Fortunately, the parking will take a long time. It would be too long. It's just like a couple seconds. Twelve hundred seconds can be quite a lot, though. He doesn't go all the way in the parking lot. I want to move that point. I wonder where the origin point is. I really thought it was in the middle of the car. Need to check that. So this is all working fine if he was in the parking space. <laughs> there we go. I don't know if he backed up or not. It's kind of hard to tell if he doesn't have headlights. I'm just going to assume it worked, because it makes sense that this would work. Alright, does it make sense this would work? If this is a... I don't know, if it was 90 degrees, it would be negative 90 degrees, which is the opposite direction, yeah. It should work. So I'm going to assume that does work. So the only thing I want to know is where the origin point is, and... Why isn't all the way in that parking spot? It's right in the center of the car. That means the point is wrong. Let's take a look at that. So it was this parking space? Could be 594-1437. Uh, 594-1437, I got the exact point. That just tells me it's stopping still too early. I mean, it should only be one pixel away if speed is set to one. Yeah. So if it's the distance is less than one, it stops moving. Which means it's not exactly where it's supposed to be, but it's hard to get things to go exactly where you want them to go. I guess I just uh, just put it in the space a little more. Let's go to 591-1441. If that looks better. Also, I really haven't noticed the difference between each of the vehicles. They all look the same. <laughs> oh, that's more in the parking spot. At least it looks like it's parked. So imagine at night the lights would be on. It would stand out even better. I think they don't look as interesting during the day. Though you can see them. And there'll be cars like constantly moving along this highway is the idea, going one way and the other way. So this one will have constant movement. This is just some extra thing that's in here. Looking at other vehicles. 
That looks like the same kind of vehicle. That is definitely a truck. I guess there was just various. That might be a van. Hard to tell. Alright, well that's the first one done. Only things I can think of is, I think the image blend does seem to be a darker color too often. To fix that, I mean it's nice to have black cars too. But I could also just make higher values so it doesn't get close to, yeah I should do that instead of zero. Zero is very dark. Let's do like 50. So the black cars are actually just like a dark gray, if we do roll that. And cars should be generally a bit brighter now. Um, other than that, I think it's fine. Things seem to work pretty well. Let's pull this note somewhere else. I guess it would make most sense in the uh, folder that we're in. Yeah. I'm going to just keep using the same note for the new points. Alright, well I think that's it. It works good. Um, I'm going to do that same thing for the other five vehicles. There is one, okay, there's one thing that I haven't done and that's to make this thing repeat. It, right now it just drives off screen and then it's not going to drive anymore which is probably fine honestly for this vehicle but i think i want to do something where this has more random chance so i think i'll do the same code actually copy Paste. And, uh, yeah. About to. Technically, it's just going to stop on the outside. But our state's going to go back to 1. I need this because a lot of the vehicles might do this. I don't know. A lot of, not many of them end up in the same point that they arrived in, but all I have to do is change the X and Y here as part of this little thing. So this part just needs to change to a random range. Uh, let's do 600 to 6,000. So yeah, it'll drive off the screen and then it'll wait a long time, but it'll just repeat its action again. I kind of think I want to reset the color at that point too. Otherwise it's just the same guy who keeps coming back. What's up with that? So we can do this too. And this. stuff and crimming into this one. Basically running the creation code again. 
I could have also just destroyed the object and recreated it. Or something like that. I guess this is fine. The, I, the other thing I'm missing then... I don't know, I was thinking maybe I make it to where it doesn't start. Every time. Maybe I go to like an action zero. Before it actually starts moving. With the timer. do that. Right. So I'm just going to do an alarm at the very beginning set state to equal zero and then once the alarm goes off it actually does what it's supposed to do so uh, that's fine all right so now it won't always be on screen immediately. Now it's got some variance to it. Oh yeah, action zero. And then it'll come on screen. And at the end, it just does the same thing again with the new vehicle. I won't really be able to see if the backing up is working until I have headlights and taillights, then it'll be obvious. I think it's working now. There it is, an orange car. Oh, he didn't stop. Um, did I not add? Yeah, okay, I know why. Because it's still equal to two. There we go. Also, the backing up would look better if it went straight back. Kind of goes up at an angle. Everything there works great. Um, look for the backup part. Backup being 13. Let's change this point. Uh, let's zoom in. This would be easier. So our parking spot is here, right? So I want to back up to like there. 605, 14, 18. Wanted to go kind of like straight back and then where it's going.
That didn't look right. You're just driving sideways. That's weird. I can't, I can't explain why you look like you was sideways. Might have something to do with negative. Maybe I just do like uh, 360 minus. That's still going to be a negative. Or 180. Maybe that's what I need to do. Instead of negative, just do like 180 plus whatever it is. Because that would be the other way, right? Try that. <laughs> this is the only one that's going to do something like this. Backing up. The rest of them just kind of are at a point. Like there's one that's going to be on this island. And he just kind of drives onto the road. Drives here and then drives off. Uh, these ones just drive along the road. So, this is the only one I made kind of complicated. Okay, that looked correct. I don't know if it's facing the right way, but. I think the only other thing I could do is maybe I add like a smooth turn. It would look better. And if I, like I want to get all this stuff figured out before I do my next vehicle, right? So I've got like a target direction and I want to just like move to be in that target. How do I do that? So instead of it equaling direction immediately it's got to equal like a variable and it's trying to get to direction and that way it would smoothly turn and that would look better let me think about it I've done things like this so it shouldn't be too difficult it's kind of like setting drag to an object The idea, though, is deciding which way to go. Something like, you need to say, if image angle is less than direction, image angle plus equals turn. Oh, I am just saying else. And then for all that, I just say if image angle. If it's if it's close it shouldn't turn at all so oh, so if image angle minus uh, direction is less than Oh, what's a good degree? I guess one degree.
or actually in this case, I want to say if it's greater within one degree, do this stuff. Otherwise, it doesn't need to change direction because it's already you know, within one degree of the facing. All right, I think that's how I do that. Make smooth turns. And I think this is fine because it's backing up. I need to set it to be what it needs to be to back up without the turning part. But I think it's going to try and turn if I have this code going. Oh, so what's wrong here? Oh, turn doesn't exist. Um, so how far are we turning? That's the question. I think one degree might be... Yeah, let's just start with one degree. Because it can turn 60 degrees a second. That might be fine. I'm just worried now that this is broken. I mean, as, as long as I'm constantly setting the image angle back to this, like just like before, it should be fine. Because before I was setting it to be direction, but then I was setting it to be the opposite of that. So it should be fine for backing up. Let's test it now. See if we've got smoother looking turns. It's not even turning at all now. It's just trying to go to zero, it looks like. Because there's definitely some turning there. this part's wrong. If image angle minus direction is greater than 1. I feel like this is always a positive number. So, yeah, this probably isn't right. <laughs> um, if image angle was like 90 and the direction we're going is 180, 90 minus 180 would be negative 90. It wouldn't be greater. I need to do like sine of. I think that might fix it. So it's always a positive number. Not sine. I want to do always a positive, which is ABS. All right absolute value. So it's always a positive number and we want to get that to 1. Alright, let's try that. It's just a lot of testing to get the right look. He's just bouncing side to side now. Got zero traction. He turned way too slow. Alright, let's boost his turn. Because I think he's facing the wrong way to start with.
Also, this might be bad. But... Because what I'm thinking is it comes from off screen. It should be facing to the right. So coming from off screen, it should have been a lot closer to facing the correct direction. Which makes me think that it was turning around and driving backwards. I mean, this is backwards. You know, I could fix this. I mean, there's an easy fix for this. fits for all of them too. This will work great. This will draw headlights on top of it. Now we know which way it's facing. Alright, now let's increase the turn radius like by 10. I feel like 10's not going to allow us to get where we need to go though. At least not within one. Uh, this whole smooth turning thing is going to end up being not worth the effort. <laughs> I'm calling it now. Let's see what it's doing now that I can see headlights. Curious. Okay, he's facing the right way. Oh, cool trick! It's kind of working besides the 360 scope you did earlier. Man, it's unfortunate that one thing went wrong because everything else about it was great. And it's really hard to explain what went wrong, other than it was going towards the point and it overshot it and went back, and that caused the whole spin thing. Because that's the only explanation I can think of, and that's kind of annoying to fix. But he's never spun before I added this angle thing, right? Like, that was the first time we've seen spinning. But that tells me it's got something to do with the image angle. And probably the fact that... <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> it's funny. It's probably got something to do with the fact that I'm moving the hitbox. And if I just, instead of using image angle, I just draw the sprite differently, it'll probably fix that. That's what I'm thinking. So let's go with that idea. I like that. So we just say angle equals zero. Instead of image angle, we're doing angle. Angle. Go ahead and 
draw. Copy that. Oh, what'd I do? Paste it there. Just uh, turning the sprite, not turning the object anymore. Let's test that. Still doing spins. Seems like the angle is slowly shifting little by little. You can see it with the headlights kind of jittering. is the spin. Kinda wanna just say screw this and go back to what I had. I'm curious if what I had was working then. The smooth turns are nice. I keep pressing three instead of one. I think I want the smooth turning to work, but it's going to take me probably an hour or so to get it working. Oh. It's definitely this part that's broken. I need to come up with something else. But then also increasing turn, I need to, I don't know, that's not going to work out either because I need it to turn faster than one degree, but that means I need something that like makes up for the other nine degrees that it might not be, which is using like, I, I kind of know what the code looks like. It's kind of like collision code where 
If you're coming towards the ground, you use something to bring you right next to the ground. I've used it before. I don't know if I have it saved though. I'll have to go digging for code to find the thing that causes you to collide with the ground. And I can use that same kind of script to uh, make the angle go where it's supposed to go. Yeah, I don't have it. I don't know. Is it worth it? Do I just say fuck it and go with the, the other one? It only matters for this guy. I, the rest of them, they rarely ever make like sharp turns. I really think I'm just gonna say fuck it on this one. I'm sick of doing this like ridiculous stuff to make it work. I guess I'll keep angle in here just in case I change my mind later. Just don't want to fuck with it. For something like some smooth turning on vehicles on the world map. I don't know. Doesn't seem worth the effort. Okay. So, I'm going to keep all this like it is, move on to the next vehicle, um, yeah, I should probably get all the traffic done off stream, might take me like a day or two. Uh, well, a day or two of, you know, work days, I only get to work like three or four hours. But yeah, I'm gonna end here. I've been streaming for a pretty long time, I think. I don't know how long exactly. Two and a half hours, that's not too bad. I can probably work on this for another hour and get the next vehicle in. But anyway, later.